What's up, y'all? I got a sprint mechanics question. It says, do you think high knees and spending more time pushing through the hip is optimal to generate stride length? Or do you think shorter contact time and slightly less push through is optimal? All right, so let's forget about stride length for a second and uh, just talk about this pushing through the hip or like pushing behind you. Uh, so the key thing to understand is that uh, the amount you need to push behind you is going to depend on how much you break in front of you, okay? So if you're contacting the ground further out in front, um, you're gonna generate a little bit larger braking impulse in the beginning of your stance phase, and that's gonna mean you have to uh, push behind you more to generate more propulsive impulse um, in the latter part of your stance phase, okay? Now, uh, some people run fastest doing this more than others, okay? Um, and, and in my opinion, the determining factor there is how much contact time do you require, okay? So people who uh, are gonna thrive on longer contact times are going to use this breaking and pushing method more, okay? People who uh, do well with short contact times are gonna use it less, all right? Uh, so that is an individual thing. You don't necessarily get to decide uh, like how much braking and pushing you should do. Um, so you don't really get to choose how much you should be pushing behind your hip, okay? Um, that is a product of your physical characteristics and your physical capacity, okay? Now, um, as people get faster, um, they tend to decrease contact time. And so they probably do, you know, as they develop, uh, use this strategy less and that's why you would tend to see this less from like elite sprinters Okay, um, but you can't necessarily just decide to do that Okay, you have to develop the physical capacity in order to alter that technique So to run your fastest there there's not like one Optimal, you know hip hyper extension angle or one optimal stride length that everybody should be pursuing. Okay, it is an individual thing um, Now talking about stride length so yes, if you, if you do like, you know, bigger front side mechanics and you push behind you more, basically if you do like more dramatic action of your leg, that is going to generate stride length, okay? Um, as opposed to like being quicker and less dramatic. Um, but if you, are, if you are doing that beyond what is like natural for you, um, then you are going to be slowing yourself down, okay? You're going to gain stride length but you're gonna lose stride rate, um, most likely to a degree that results in lower velocity, okay? Uh, so that, you know, that might be something that you do just as like a training strategy. Um, maybe if you're like working on a partic uh, particular technique, um, you could do that more easily by emphasizing stride length over quickness. Um, or maybe you're doing it just to like as sort of like a uh, training exercise, right? Maybe for like dynamic flexibility purposes or you know, something like that. So maybe that's something that you do, but it's not the way that you sprint the fastest, okay? Just like intentionally running really long. So yeah, trying to run with particularly long strides is not necessarily something we wanna have to think about, okay? Uh, we would rather have you sprint just competitively, sprint on instinct, and not have to think about trying to sprint long. Now, it is possible that you are uh, running short and choppy, right? Um, you know, for example, like soccer players tend to develop that habit because they're used to uh, sprinting with a ball at their feet. So then they take like short, choppy strides. Um, and in that case, you know, in intentionally lengthening your stride could be a good thing. But, uh, you know, generally consciously trying to run long is going to slow you down. And anytime you do try to make a change in that department, uh, one way or the other, it's going to be experimental, okay? Um, there's a chance it could help you run faster. Uh, more than likely, it's probably gonna result in you running slower if you're consciously trying to make a, a rate or length change. On the other hand, if you improve the vertical impulse that you apply to the ground while sprinting, uh, you improve your force production, then you can increase stride rate and increase stride length at the same time without even having to think about it, okay? And notice that I said improve, not just increase. All right, so what we're looking for is something more like this red curve of force rather than the black curve, okay? This red curve would be a much faster sprinter. Um, it is higher force, 
but is specifically, it's a sharper spike in force. All right, and that allows uh, the sprinter to get off the ground faster, which allows the sprinter to move over the ground faster. For more on this topic, I have two series of posts. Uh, one series is just on the physics of sprinting, uh, and the other series is on training for sprinting, uh, how to improve that force production. All right, uh, if you're on Instagram, just check out the hashtag that's below the video. If you're on YouTube, just click the link in the video description.